kyphosis versus lordosis. What's the difference? When we look at spinal anatomy, we understand that the spine has different curvatures that are designed to be there in a normal, healthy, functional spine. And these curves um, act to help, act as a shock absorber to the body, meaning there's compression to the body, those curves act like a spring. And the spine has a, from the side, has a very soft S view from the sides, from your neck down to your mid-back, down to your low back. And when the spine has this normal curves, it can, it's very healthy and it can deal with mechanical stress and absorbs the, the pressure or compression of gravity. We know from the spine is also supposed to be straight complete from the front and curves from the front are abnormal. But curves from the side are not abnormal. They're supposed to be there. And there are natural curve types to the body. There are two main words that we have to understand is something called lordosis and something called kyphosis. A lordosis is when the spine curves or bends towards the front of the body, um, towards the front or towards the center or inward to the body. And then kyphosis means the spine is, is curving towards the back or backwards um, shape, meaning a kyphosis is more like a reverse C and where a lordosis is more like a standard C shape. These, these curves are, are normal in, di in different areas of the body. However, the opposite curvature is abnormal in the same area of the body. Meaning, if you're meant to have a lordosis in a certain area and you have a kyphosis in that area, that would be an abnormal kyphosis where you're supposed to have a lordosis and vice versa. If you have a kyphosis somewhere and you're supposed to have, or sorry, if you have a lordosis somewhere where you're supposed to have a kyphosis, that would be abnormal kyphosis or lordosis in that area. So. When we look at the different areas of the spine, we're looking at the cervical, thoracic, and lumbar areas. The cervical spine and lumbar areas are designed to have a lordosis or a forward bending curvature, where the thoracic spine is supposed to have a kyphosis bending backwards. Each of these curvatures have a normal range that's considered um, the range for an average person to have. The cervical lordosis should be 20 to 40 degrees. A, a, a normal lumbar lordosis should be around 40-ish degrees. A thoracic kyphosis should be 20 to 40 degrees. So we know there should be normal ranges within the person's spine. When, if a person falls out of these normal ranges, they can either have something called hyperkyphosis or hyperlordosis if the numbers are bigger than each of those numbers I just described. If the numbers are less, they can have hypokyphosis and hypolordosis, just depending if the numbers are below the third, third threshold. Both those things are considered abnormal. It's kind of like blood pressure. You know, 120 over 80 is normal. There's a little bit of range. If somebody has a little bit higher, a little bit lower, it's kind of within the range. But if somebody has 140 over 100, they're considered to have high blood pressure. If somebody has too low, like 90 over 50, they're considered to have too low, it's too, it's too low of blood pressure. The same thing is true when it comes to these ranges of the normal spinal lordosis and kyphosis. When we look at excessive kyphosis or excessive rounding of the mid-back, that is something called hyperkyphosis. Um, if we look at excess lordosis of the lumbar spine, that's considered sway back, where the abdomen protrudes forward and the buttocks protrude backwards. And that's considered a um, hyperlordosis or sway back. The opposite can occur too. A patient can have a flattening of the mid-back and that's called a hypokyphosis. And somebody could have too, not enough curve in the lumbar spine and that's called a hypolordosis. What are some signs of hyperkyphosis or hyperlordosis of the lumbar or thoracic spine. Numbness and tingling in the legs um, due to nerve compression. Fatigue during the abnormal balance, meaning when the spine has lost its normal balance, it can lead to fatigue. It can affect not, uh, balance and equilibrium and coordination and gait. And in severe cases, as hyperkyphosis continues to compress, it can affect lung function because it causes the spine to be very stiff in, stiff in these hyperkyphosis areas. And it can prevent the spine from flexing properly when the patient breathes. It can also affect bladder and bowel function because as hyperkyphosis increases, the, the length of the torso decreases and it can affect bladder and bowel function due to compression and lack of elongation. 
Hyperlordosis can have very similar things, except it normally doesn't affect the lung tissue. It normally affects, it can affect the nerves coming out the low back, cause back pain, muscle pain. It can affect sciatica, which is a nerve that exits the lumbar spine. It can affect the way the ability, the person has the ability to lay on their back, meaning when they lay on their back, they have an arch in their lumbar spine. They can't get their lumbar spine to actually touch. These types of patients are also very prone to something called spondylolisthesis, and this is where the last lumbar our spine shifts forward off the tailbone or off the sacrum because of the increased lordosis it causes this it can lead to this type of condition they're prone to having these types of conditions so we have to be very concerned when we see this increased position unfortunately with this we talked about having these curves too big but these things can also happen when they're too small, when they have hyperlordosis of the lumbar spine or hyperlordosis of the cervical spine. It can affect the nerve tissue. It can affect the muscles. It can affect the ability for the person to function and, and move properly. So when we look at abnormal alignment of the sagittal, we know it can be affect many, many things. It, but primarily, it affects the foundation of which the structure of your body is built on, and it affects the way your spine protects its nerve system. So therefore, the effects can be very widespread. When we look at loss of kyphosis or hyperkyphosis or loss of lordosis or hyperlordosis, we know both these things can be treated non-surgically. And these treatments need to be very proactive, not only to restore the symptoms that a patient is feeling, because we definitely want to reduce those symptoms, but we want to improve what's causing those symptoms by addressing the underlying cause. So we want to try to restore these natural curves back into the normal alignment to preserve spinal integrity, disc function, spinal function, mobility, and of course, to decrease any type of nerve compression that these loss of curves could be occurring to that person's body. So being proactive, if you know you have some of these things already occurring, being proactive and treating them early is the best recommendation that we can offer you. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.